Hey you guys, welcome back. Um, today, we're gonna be doing a perm wrap with spiral rods. Now the one thing, I mean this mannequin really, I could just do a spiral wrap on it, but I don't have a mannequin that's down to my waist or the mannequin's waist or person's waist. These are the ones, that that's the ones that you would use the loop rods on or else you're gonna kill yourself trying to put enough spiral uh, rollers on there, perm rollers on there to um, to do it. Or you could get pretty much the same look. When hair is that long, when hair is that long, it's, you know, you're going to get, the weight of the hair is going to pull that curl a little bit away from the scalp anyways. So what you want to do, you want to subsection at the parietal line, section off the flat part of the head. Now tip of the ear to tip of the ear, right there, tip of the ear, in other words, top of the ear, across at the occipital. And then again, you've got your nape area. We didn't section down into the nape, normally like we do, you know, coming down that little happy face. So um, what we're doing here is then I took the nape area and right at about, I'd say, oh, uh, well on this little area here where it kind of curves down, that's about an inch, but about a half inch. First of all, let me talk to you about the loop rods. These are what the loop rods are. These are meant for really long hair. You're not going to use them a lot, but when you do, you want them to work. Now, after you use them, the one thing you want to do, cameraman, if you want to go get that other chair, you can. It's right in the hallway there. I mean, if that's a little easier for you. Yeah, it comes up a lot easier. Sorry, guys, he was trying to find a place to sit. But anyways, um, the loop rods come in different widths, but they're not as wide as what you would find, for instance, a peach rod. Because if they were, you would not be able to bend it and be successful at it. So this is pretty much, I don't think I've ever seen one wider this, than this. This is about a half inch. So it would be between a white and a gray rod size as far as curl value. In other words, that's how you de determine the size of the curl is the size of the rod. Now, the one thing about a loop rod, which you're gonna do once you wrap the hair into it, so you can wrap it from one end to the other and go up and down, just exactly like you do with the spiral wrap on a regular perm rod. I should have a perm rod right here in front of me, but I don't. Um, let see, do I have an under here? Nope, I don't. All right. You guys know what a perm rod looks like. Uh, those of you that have been watching, you've got a pretty good idea. Um, anyways, perm rods only run, they're only about this long. Cameraman, could you give me a perm rod, please? It's this right there. Uh, get the white one, the one that says white on it. I guess I should have been a little more prepared, but you know what? We're not here to impress you. We're here to teach you. Yes, that white cabinet. And down, 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 down. See where it says white? There you go. Give me a white rod. Just one. Just one. There you go. Okay. Oh, I have to sneeze. So you can see that this is pretty much the same size. It fits very close. This is a concave rod. They do have those that are straight across but you would spiral it. So you think about somebody with hair down to their, down to their hips, I and mean, think about the tiny little section you'd have to take to make sure that it wasn't bound up with a lot of hair, that you wouldn't get product down to the ends because the ends are what's inside. So this is the reason for the loop rods. The loop rods, you see much more space that you're gonna be putting on there. Now there's a technique to wrapping it. The thing about loop rods is they take up space. And the thing about loop rods, you don't want them up in her face, you want them away from her face. So there's a technique to it. So um, I'm gonna give you some terms and stuff and I recommend you write them down, practice it, say it to yourself so that you get it. So you won't be busy doing it and wondering, oh God, I gotta take that one down. Uh, you know, your time is money in our industry so you have to keep moving forward. Uh, you're going to take your subsections about the length of what you would on a regular rod. Okay, that would be about the length that I would on a regular rod. 
if you feel that you've got this little soft spot between those little rough spots, that's the soft spot you take it to. That's your section, okay? So that's about what I'm gonna, that's where I'm gonna take it. I'll probably get, I'll probably get a couple here, but I may end up with three as I come up higher. Now, the thing about doing it on at, at the area, lower occipital and into the nape, if you do them vertically, it makes it a lot harder for them to lay back because the rod, and you'll understand that in just a few minutes, will end up on their neck and you can't pick it up. So, and it, the thing about this too, see the other area about it, is normally people with, that are gonna require these have all one length hair. If they, even if they have it layered, you're still going to uh, be able to cover what we're doing here with the hair above the occipital area or mid occipital and on up because it's going to lay on top of it. Um, there's a whole technique to doing this. So anyways, what I'm going to do, I just moistened it and I'm going to show you how to wrap it. Uh, the main thing to remember here is you have to rinse them and if you have a shampoo bowl, uh, you know that you need to lay them back on it. So here, let me give you a clue on the end paper. Some people take them and they bend that end so they can pick them up and so on, but I still think that takes forever. Place the end papers down, press hard with your comb and turn. And I just call it, let's make a flower. Okay, just keep turning, turning, turn it till you can see that they're really separated and you have to press hard into the palm of your hand. Don't be a sissy about it. All right, so you can see that that's, I hope you can see it, that you can tell. You know, I, I gotta share some, with, something with you right now. Do you see how difficult that is to see? And um, one of the reasons I haven't done a lot of hair color, per se. I'm gonna show it, I'll zoom. Oh, you're gonna zoom it in? Okay. Okay, he's gonna zoom it in so you can see it. See it where you can see the paper separated? Now here's the variable. Some of you with the color that you have on your computer can see it. Some of you with the color on your co that you have expanding from your computer, you can't. That's what I'm talking about as far as it's making it real difficult to teach color, to teach it, teach it, to see the true results. I mean, we can see results on gray, we can see results, but you can't see the vibrancy of a color. It's a little bit more difficult because everybody's screen is a little bit different. So when you, by the way, trust your PhD stylist. I've told you that book, the last chapter, everything you need to know about color is in there. Now, you still need to learn product, but if you know color, you'll understand product and you'll understand what you're up against. I mean, what is the color that created this? But yet, Depends on what you see on your screen, isn't it? So that's the variable. That's what makes it hard. And normally 99.99% .99 of the time, it's not the color. We know it's brown. It's a tone of color. What tone of color do you see? Because it's the tone that many times is going to say it's too dark, it's too light. So hey, let's go back to permian, okay? But I wanted to share that with you. Google it. Trust your PhD stylist. Uh, you can pick it up. The stories, like I told you, they're about... Um, salon situations, everything everything that stylists live through, every their thoughts, their appreciation, their angers, their situations. And then the very last chapter is, is a special chapter. And it does, it gives you the history of color, how it comes together. And really, you need to know color in your brain. You need to know how it's made. Practice looking at people and determine how was that color made. Don't say too dark. Don't say too warm. Find a word for dark. Find a word for warm. Worm. Warm. Okay, come on. Let's get back. Let's get back. Okay, so I, I talked about that because, yeah, I know some of you, it's hard for you to see it. It just looks all white because it's all blended together. And some of you, you can. Amazing. All right, so we split it apart. So we're going to take this, and I'm going to take it in half. I'm going to bring it out. And the thing about this, now you can bring it to a point, and you always want to wrap wet hair. Now, here's the factor, okay? When you're wrapping this, I'm going to do a double flap wrap. If you wrap it going down, 
going under like you would a normal perm. And you're going to start on one end. You see, you're starting on one end there, and I've got that end in there, and I'm going to attach it. It's attached. You see that? That thing is pulling. It's on there. So now I'm going to move it and spiral it down. The thing that reason that I'm telling you not to wrap it down is because now you're going to loop it up. So if you loop it up, how are you going to wrap these? Well, you're thinking, okay, I can wrap it there. Okay, so once you wrap it here, how are you going to wrap the next row? If you want it to go under, if you want that loop, now see that's where you're going to have to be careful because you've got to separate that for your client. If you want that loop, now I'm going to try and just, I'm going to just bring it out and do it over. If you want that loop to go down, you're going to flip it up. Okay, attach it. Travel with it. That's spiraling it right there. Now do you see? Now this goes under. The thing that's nice about this, when you put them at the shampoo bowl, you can raise it up so then you can rinse the hair. So there is your why on that. So I'm going to go ahead, do the next one. And all of these are going to be wrapped going up like I'm flipping them up. Now, could I do them vertically? Yes, I could. The only thing, now let me just show you real quick about doing it vertically. Because like I said, I'm here to teach you, not to show you. If you do it vertically, and it's not wrong to do it vertically, if you can pull it up. The point is, now, Here's the thing about doing it vertically, especially in the front. If I want them to go back, I have to wrap it forward. If I want it to go forward, I have to wrap it back. It's all in that coming together into that spiral. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to wrap it forward first and you're going to see that I have to hook it back. I wanted to show you the different size. Uh, I've got some different size. Um, make sure it's attached. You gotta bring it in, attach it first, keep your fingers on there, and then travel up with it. All right, now I'm doing it forward, right? Okay, so how am I gonna put that next one in? Am I gonna just pull that over? No. I have to make that going forward. It's going to rest right here on her neck so that I can work the next one. Don't make more work for yourself. Know where you're going. Know where you're at. So I'm going to wrap, do it again, and this time I'm going to wrap it going back. So see at the front, at the temporal area, I'll wrap it going back. I won't wrap it going forward because I want it to go forward. Now, do I want it to go forward too much? It just depends on where we're at right here because you may want it to go back. That becomes a decision on your part. So I'm going to wrap this going back. Oh, it happens. here. You have to get it wet too, by the way. If you want it to stay on there, it's got to be wet. So with this, this mannequin's dry, so. All right, so I'm going to wrap it. I got to attack. Oh, come on here. Get over here. That's the layers. See what layers do to you? They drive you crazy. So let's attach it. Get that in there and then travel down. Now, put it forward, and then we can work the next one. You see what I'm saying? So I'm going to go ahead and do this one down.
and this is where you have, I mean, there's so many choices that you can make here. Could I have just done it that way? Yes. But the point is, now, when I layer the shampoo bowl, this isn't going to pull up. Do you see why? Here's your why. If I put this one at the shampoo bowl, I can put it up against it. This one will not go up. I can't, she'll have to rest on that on her neck. Not necessarily a safe thing for your client. So I want this to go down, so I'm going to flip it up. Now the one thing that happens with these rods, once you do, once you wrap a perm, they tend to stay curly. So you see, now these will go up, so she can go at the shampoo bowl. This won't. You know, you get a bunch of them, you're going to have a problem. So the next row again is going to be going up. And you need to make your rows, you know, you don't want them, you don't want them wider than the, than the perm rod. Not too much wider. Because if they have hair that long, it's going to be dropping down anyways. It's going to pull some of that curl away from the scalp. The only reason to put it real close to the scalp is because they want curl at the scalp. They want volume at the scalp. They want lift at the scalp. We don't necessarily have to worry about that. So again, I'm going to take this, roll it up, attach it, come on here, and where, where are you going to have problems? Right, when you do it vertically. So we're doing it horizontally, and you see how it overlaps the other one. Now this, you have to force them in there. And they can be a little bit loose. It's okay for them to be loose, because then you can really lift it up. Now see, my curl's trying to come out there. I didn't attach it. So when you don't attach it, you have to do it again, all right? So I'm just showing you at this point. Um, that's not really teaching, is it, when it's coming out like that? So sorry but we want to get this done so that you can see how to do this. Okay, I think we're going to have enough that we can go ahead and do the vertical areas. Um, and I want to show you the different size. Okay, make sure it's attached. Pull it a little bit so that you know it is. We're going up. You see I'm doing like a flip up. It's not going to flip up. It's going to still spiral down. But see, this here is going to truly spiral down and it's going to cover that. So you don't have to worry about flipping this up. It's just gonna come out kind of like a finger wave, more so than, than the other. All right, so uh, maybe I will go ahead and do these two, because uh, I'm gonna show you how to do the sides and travel into the back. This is where it gets a little bit more difficult. But do you see where this would take so much less time because you travel up and down the, the, the loop rod or the spiral rod, uh, you're gonna get solution on all of it. You're not laying all of that here. I mean, you may have to go back and forth. You may not. So let me show you what the different size. This is a gray one. It's a little bit smaller, about the size of a pink rod. Okay, this one, there's a pink one. It's about the size of a blue rod. So they're pretty tight, you know. But I'm going to give you some hints that you can do if all you have is those little tiny ones. Let me make sure this is attached. Yep, it's attached. All right. Now, do you see how I'm spiraling it? So all of that hair is going to get product. If you have to spiral back and forth, you're still not doing it as thick as you would if you were using a regular perm rod. Because this is such a small section that you're doing it on. And this gives you a good area to work on. So I want to attach it. And it's okay if it's a little bit loose. Now you might end up with some loop rods um, at the school. The loop rods they have there, they keep popping back out. And it's, it becomes too frustrating. So make sure that, that, that you take care of your loop rods. A lot of them, um, what you have to do with your loop rods, like I said, they're going to stay in that curl position because they're gonna they're like that for a while. For you know, they're gonna be like that. You're gonna I mean, you're gonna have them there depending on how long it takes you to wrap. You're gonna have them wrap like that for a good amount of time, and that they'll gather that form. 
So what you do when you're done, you get warm water, a little bit more than warm water, and you put them in there and you open them flat. And once they soften, then you pull them out straight to get them back into this form. Now you see, these have been used. They've got a little bit of, a, of an angle to it. But that's what you have to do. You have to put them somewhere that they can be in warm water so then you can just kind of pull them out. So these take a little bit more time, but yet think about what you're gonna charge with this. You're gonna charge a whole lot more money for a spiral wrap. Now let me bring her straight up. Now what you're gonna do on the sides, I'm gonna show you why you would wrap it forward. I mean, why you would wrap it, um, yeah, why you would wrap it um, back because we want it to go forward. If we want this to go back, you would start here or you would start at the middle. If you're going to start here, you're going to travel around to it, all right? Let me show you that. If we start here at the perimeter line along the temporal area, if we wrap this perm now, see, I mean, I'm gonna be getting water on her face. Her hair should be wet. But let's say that we wrap it forward. I want you to see the discomfort that your client, well, if you wrap it forward, I've already showed you. How are you gonna wrap the back? So I'm gonna wrap it back, starting at the bottom, attach it. Once it's attached, then I travel. Okay, now do you see how, I, if I wrap it forward, is this gonna be possibly in her face. Yeah. See that skin right there? You're going to have all those problems. I mean, you, as far as putting product on. Can you do it? Is it wrong to do it? No. If you don't have hair all the way coming, you know, coming out to this end that you've gone back and forth because their hair is so long, this is too close to the eyes. You really should not. You want client safety first. So what we're going to do is we're going to make these go back. But we're going to start here. Take this section. See how nice this nice big section that you can take and get a lot more hair done at one time. So we're going to take this, we're going to wrap it, what? Going back so that we hook it going forward. And I'm going to use a real skinny one this time just to show you the difference. Okay, I've attached it, it's attached. Now here's the question you're saying, well if she's wrapping it back, how's she going to put that up front? I'm going to wrap it a little bit loose. See, it's not as tight. All right, so I've left that open. So it stays like this. All right, that's the thing. Don't wrap it so tight that it's going to wrap, go forward. You're going to be pushing this in just a few minutes. Once we wrap all of this and have it all going back, so if you want it, you know, know your direction. The direction that you're going to wrap it is the opposite of what you want to do. So I want this going forward, so I'm going to wrap it going back. Again, attach it, look at it, make sure that end is in there nice and clean. And then we're going to spiral. Now see that spiraling take place? Now this one can be a little tighter. It's still going to move. Now we'll do that all the way to the end. Now let me show you why. I'm going, to, I'm going to come over here. So we would go ahead and move it all over there. So we would start coming out to the end. We've had rod, 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 rod. Here is your why. So you would start on that end. You know that you can move it over to finish. And you would finish off on this end. So 
This is a spiral wrap with loop rods. We're wrapping it forward wide. God, I got some of that other hair caught up in it. Um, because we want it to go back. So see, all of my rods would have gone back. So they're going in this direction. But I wrapped it forward. Here is your Y. Let me take this one down. Well, there you go. You can see that as I wrapped it forward. So now I'm going to, it's going to be away from her face. And the size of the curl, remember, is determined by the size of the rod that you use. What's nice about this, if they have really long hair, what's kind of fun on this, and I don't have any with really long hair, but you don't have to go all the way to the scalp. I could stop here and place it if I don't want curl all the way to the scalp. That's what's, these are variables that you can do. I could do that on all of it. Still having to be careful about her face though. So I mean I am going to take it all the way up. It's going to go back. this so that it does it. So loop rods are really a great thing to have. Um, they're so much easier and um, take a whole lot less time. If I you the spiral wrap you saw how many rods I had to use it's a good investment for you. It takes a whole lot less time and, you know, when you're trying to work several clients at a time, and you get used to doing this pretty fast. And see how they overlap each other. You see how it's overlapped. That's how this whole section would be. It would just be overlapped, just as this is overlapped. But you see that it's not taking a long time. It becomes a whole lot easier for you and the curl is really nice. Again, depending on the size rod that you use, the, the width of it, how wide is it. You're going to start on, the, on this end. Now you can start on the, the end that you insert. It's whatever works best for you. I find that it doesn't matter. You're going to put it in there anyway. So, you know, some of them are just all on top. The only problem with, now see what I did? I wrapped it the wrong way because I'm talking. I wrapped it going back, so that's going to come forward. We need to do a stop start. We need to do a stop start? Okay, you won't notice that we've stopped, but um, he's going to do a stop start, and I'll be wrapping this. Okay. All right. So you see, you didn't even notice, did you? So I guess we've already been on 30 minutes, almost. How much time did we have, cameraman? Two minutes. Oh, two minutes, all right. So... This just takes a little bit, and again, you can see that the thing that's cool about this is you can actually see each one that you're doing, but this is what I want you to see. So on the, on the other side, here is going to be your Y. Okay, we want it to go, we want it to snap back, so we're going to roll it forward. That's away from her face, totally away from her face. Can you see that? All right, so this side, how do we do this now? How do we take it? You're going to anchor this by the move that you're going to do right now. We're going to go ahead and wet it. And we still want it going back. But on this side, our anchor is going to be, as soon as we wrap this, the rod itself is going to hold it back. So that first rod, when you do a spiral perm, again, I'm going to start right there, attach it, make sure it's attached, and then I travel down, spiral, 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 spiral. And then look at this. It's going to do it for me. There you go. Got them out of the way. 
this is still going back. That's how you do it. I'm not just showing you, I'm teaching you this. Look at what you're doing. That's going to then anchor it. That's why we started on this side and we know that this is going to move. Now you know that these would have traveled all the way around because I want to move over to the top as well to show you how to keep it away from the face. And um, it's going to be pretty much the same theory, the same practice. It's the, you know, it, it's, you're not doing it differently, but this is where, yeah, you got to put the chair down a bit because you're going to be on top of that client. So what, what do we do? What direction am I going to wrap this? Forward or back? I want it to go back. So do I wrap it forward or back? Because I want it to go back. Who said forward? Okay, you get 100%. There you go. And it goes back all by itself, anchors that. I could do two more right here, but I'm just going to do one because I want to do the top for you to show you how to do that. And it's basically the same principle. Forward. Be careful about talking to your client because you saw what it did to me. I started talking to you and what happened? I wrapped it the wrong direction. And you can see that you can see that this is just a little bit thicker because my section is thicker. Again, it's away from her face. Both of them are. You can see that. That's going all the way around and that would have continued traveling. Now could I put it there? Yes, because I can move this over. On these, the only thing I can do is move them up and down, but the good thing is, right, they can lay back at the shampoo bowl and you can rinse successfully without getting, uh, getting them all wet, getting their clothes wet. Okay, so on the top, we want this to go back. Uh, where you, and, and where you're going to be careful, again, is... Um, Yeah, I'm just going to do one side for you. Now, I wish I could show you what it looks like, but even if I take it down, it doesn't look the same. I mean, I'm not going to put a chemical on this mannequin because I want to use her for a whole lot of other stuff. But when you practice on your mannequin, if you want to put a chemical on it, you know, if you want to put a perm on it, you know, go ahead. Um, this mannequin is still not going to give you the look that you think you're going to get with somebody with hair down to their waist. It doesn't have the weight. You're still going to get, it's just going to look like a regular perm. But I'll tell you what. After I show you this, I, I've changed my mind. I will show you what it looks like. I'll, after I, What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do the top. We're going to cut off for a while. And then I'm going to come back, show you how to apply. We'll cut off again because I'm going to show you how to check to see if it's ready. I'm going to go ahead and take the plunge. You guys take the plunge for me. If I'm doing this for you, look up the book, please. All right? It's, it's a deal. Okay? Let's shake. Okay, thanks. Okay, so I wanted what? To go back, right? I mean, yeah, to go back. So what direction am I going to wrap it? forward. Exactly. I'm going to use the white this time. Now look at how much easier this was than a whole bunch of spiral rods. And I can still pick this up and finish this off right here. You see what I'm saying? So I would then bring this. So what's going to happen here is yes, all of them are going to lay back. Let me wrap them because I want to show you. I, I've, I've got to show you what's going to happen. I don't, I don't want to just show you. I want to teach you. Um, and many times they'll say, well, we'll come back. And, and I, I don't want to do that to you. I want to, I want to teach you this. Um, because I can't just, you know, if you assume, if I assume that you guys are getting this, what is it? You know what assume means, right? And I don't want to do that to you. So let's just keep going. I'm wrapping them going forward or going up, flipping them up, because I want them what to rest back. You're going to have a situation there up front, and I'm going to show you what that is. 
And that's where options come in. That's where possibly other choices come in. So when I get up to the top past the apex, I'm just at the upper ridge right now going up into the apex. Let's see that's a much cleaner wrap. Again, if you have hair this long, I mean where, you know, they've got it down to their hips. You're going to be walking back and forth doing this. You're not just going to be wrapping this perm. You're going to be walking back and forth trying to get those rods on there so that they fit properly. And I prefer to do a double flap instead of the bookend or the fold uh, because you can capture the hair so much better, especially if once you get into layers and stuff. You need that longer. Now see how that just spirals in? You need that longer. Um, no, I got a little bit right there that didn't go in. I'll get it with the next one. Okay. Okay. See it coming in? So as I do this, And if you have to have your client lean her head back, they're only going to lean it back for a period of time. You're going to be doing this all day. You're going to be on your feet all day. So you want to take care of your body. Okay. As you can see, they're going back now. A couple more. dry and it's just going to slip out. Remember your hair has to be wet for it to attach to that end paper. I love these spray bottles. You can get them anywhere anymore. Um, I know that they're at Sally's but usually uh, you know professional salons, uh, supply houses definitely have them. I love it. You're not k -k -k squirting, squirting, squirting. You're just doing it. Okay this is what I'm getting there to show you. Hang on. I'm trying to put... Okay, it's attached. Now, if you hold it really loose, it's going to keep sliding out on you. Don't hold it loose. Hold it taut. I know that um, some instructions say no tension. Well, sometimes for it to stay on there, you have to have tension. Okay, so here, if you want you could bring them to the side as opposed to bringing them back. They're going to stay back for you. You're going to be fine with it, but if, if she wants possibly a little bit of movement, you can do that. This is where you would break it up, just on the other side of the apex, right at the point of the frontal fringe, and you can see that that's slightly triangular shaped, okay? Thinner here, wider there. So um, you could bring it across if you want, just for movement, if you think that that's what you want to do to create a different look. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and bring them all back. And see, it makes it so much easier to separate those papers when you flower them out like that instead of messing around. So I'm going to curl it forward. Let me let me show you what happens. Well, I'll show you in a minute. Right now I'm going to curl it forward on the last one. But we already know what will happen. If I curl it back, it's going to fall in her face. So let's not even waste time doing that because, I mean, if I, you know, if I curl it going back, it's going to fall on her face. I would have to then hook it here and then it would land on her face. We don't want to do that. So you see how this is a little bit wider. It's starting to become pie shaped now. And that's what's going to happen in this area. So what I'm going to do, now you've got the idea. I would do the exact same thing on the other side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to finish wrapping it, then I'm going to go ahead and pull out a perm. Okay, see it? It's hooked. And then just spiral it. And those little broken hairs, yes, they're going to be there. 
it, spiral it all the way out. See what happens. I did it wrong, didn't I? How come you guys didn't stop me? I didn't see any red flashing lights. Let's do it correctly. I'm talking again, so I lose it. And this is going to be the problem for you. How do you take these out without totally pulling? And uh, that's why I want to go ahead and show you how to do that. Okay, wrap it forward, pearl knot back. If you want it to go back, you got to wrap it forward. I need to follow my own techniques. Just common sense. Sometimes, sometimes it runs away from us. Okay, so wrap it. Sorry if you can't see it. Because I want you to see it. There you go. It's going forward. And then I spiral it all the way. And then I attach it so that it goes back. Okay. Now you know when we do a perm, a regular perm with regular rods, this is where we wrap it going forward. Because if we wrap it going back, it falls on our face. Unless you're using picks or something to hold it back. With this method, you don't have to. Um, I'm going to wrap it forward. Another gray one. There it is. So I'm wrapping it forward. And see those layers? They're going to drive me crazy because they're going to want to keep coming out. And this is sometimes, when you have too many layers, get another end paper. Put it in there. The end paper is meant to hold that product in. I see here's another little piece. Okay, attach it. And then now I'm going to bring it back. So it stays back for you. We're going to be putting cotton here to protect your skin. So you've got the gist of it. This I wrap forward so that it goes back to rest on these. You have to start at the bottom with this type of wrap. You can't start at the top and expect it to work because as I, if I was wrapping these back, I'd have to pull this up every time. Your time is money. You're wasting time doing this. Don't waste time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead. We're going to cut off what well, you won't be able to tell. I'm going to go ahead and, and wrap this coming around. I'll describe it again. I'll finish the top and then I'm going to apply product to show you how to apply show you how to put it on there so that it safest way for the client okay so just be a minute cool. okay. um, one thing I've got this all wrapped as you can see I've got a towel around her so things kind of change from what I had before in the face I'm going to turn this around so you can see now little clue when you're working in this area use a clip to move those rods out of the way and like that, it helps you get in there, all right? So when you finish off this area, um, of course, you're going to do the whole bottom first. You're not going to have to. But if for some reason you do the top, but that's how I was able to get them out of the way. So anytime you need to get them out of the way, you can clip them out of the way if it's necessary. So these are going to lay on top of the other ones. Now, one other, oops, oops, oops. That's why I try to pick this up. One other area that I want to talk to you about um, is sometimes, now this is what I was saying, the, the loop rods will develop that circular, see how they are? Okay, so wrap it forward, if I want to get it tighter, it makes it harder to go back. So see that kind of loosened up a bit, but because it's used to coming in this direction, there's your why. You have to put them in warm water so they soften and straighten out. That's the one thing about these rods. They do require a little bit of attention afterwards. It's not like rinsing them like you do your regular perm rods and put them away. So I'm going to force this, and sometimes when you force it, it pops back out. All right, I want to get this one too. Wrap it forward, okay, force it back, and see if that doesn't pop back out. Now that's almost too tight. You don't want them really, really tight because when the hair swells, once we put the product on there, uh, the, the area for breakage becomes extreme. So if you get them too tight, that's another reason, by the way, when you're doing a regular perm, you don't push that bend all the way back 
to, to secure that rod tightly. It's got to be, it's got to rest once you put the rod on there, like this on the hair. It's got to actually like halo the head with this band. Uh, so you have to be careful about that. Um, I'm going to mix up, oops, so with the, with the client you probably would not have these little situations. You cannot use a, a metal uh, clip to hold this up. You almost have to use a plastic one or one of these uh, butterfly clamps. So we're going to start in the back. You always start at the back on the bottom. And I'm going to mix up my perm solution. This one has a little bit of an activator. It is an acid perm because this hair has been pre-colored. And they do have a lovely fragrance. I always tell people, yes, I know it smells like money to me. What does it smell like to you? So perm solution tends to have a bit of a fragrance. And I brought a, where did I put it? lost it. Cameraman, if you don't mind, and don't shake your perm. I know people, uh, others say, that it just, I find that you don't have to. Uh, if you do it in this form, the client, I mean a client can shake it themselves at home, can't they? Okay, if you do it in this form and pretend like you're counting, it's a little bit more professional for one. So I have to and then slap it on there. Um, would you mind getting me another thumbtack? I lost the one I had here. I like to open these up with a thumbtack as opposed to cutting them across. Because many times when you cut them across, get the one on top of the, the comb there. See the one on, on the comb. The comb's gonna stay there or it'll be fine if it comes down a little bit. But um, the reason for that is because you get a clear opening. When you cut it, many times the shear will give it a slight angle and it'll squirt off to the side. So if you place it right on the very center, and I know it's hard for you to see it, but look at it, place it right on the very center of that knob, push it all the way in, and then turn it. All right, pull it out. Give it another little shake. And then with the client, what you're gonna do is you're gonna move her head forward. Because it's under the towel, I can't. So I'm just gonna lift this up, and I'm going to gently, and you'll find a soft spot. Find, yeah, there's that soft spot on the bottle. Just travel it around your hands, and all of a sudden you'll just kind of feel it go down. See that little bubble come up? So I can't move her head forward, but do not touch the hair. Squirt it into it. I'm going to move her head forward. This is going to drive me crazy. All right, let me just take this towel off. This is all kind of pretend anyways, but you should have, for a chemical drape, it should be towel, drape, towel. All right, I'm just taking that off, not being unprofessional or any of that stuff, but this is a mannequin. So you would tilt your client's head forward, all right? You're then going to pick this up. Let me do it here first and you're going to apply from one end. Now see how it's going to drip. So you have to be careful. I'm sorry, I just forgot something. You see how that dripped? Because it was dry. That's why it's going to drip. You need to slightly moisten. Damp hair attaches to moisture better than dry hair. So you have to just give it a gentle mist. You don't want it dripping wet. You just want to give it a little bit of a gentle mist just to slightly moisten them. Don't fall on the floor. Okay, now you're going to see that the others are not going to drip. Now that was just coming out of the bottle. That didn't. Okay. So you're just going to follow it and you're going to saturate each one. Pick it up. And make sure you travel around it one time. Don't keep going back and forth on it. The hair is going to absorb it. When it starts dripping by itself, see it's not dripping off, 
right now it's soaking it in. So as it soak, soaks it in, that's where the chemical reaction is happening. Please don't fall. Um, so then I'm going to pick this up, turn it. You see it? Now when up here, when I'm up here on her face, I would take the towel from her shoulder because she doesn't have shoulders. But I would take the towel from her shoulder and protect her face. All right, always do that. The fumes, the smell, all of that's going to get to your client. So you would protect her face when you do that. So anywhere close to the face, up on top, you want to make sure that you have a towel in front so this stuff doesn't get in her eyes. And, uh, you know, preferably, I use usually the towel that's on their shoulders that I do that with. Let me move this up. So that is how you're going to apply. I'm going to move them forward, another one, and then now I'm going around to the other side. And just make sure that you get each one. If you don't, you're going to have some straight hair in there. It, that hair that you did not saturate is, gonna, is not going to look at the other hair and say, oh, I should curl like that hair did. No, you have to put the chemical on it. And because this is just, you know, I didn't have to wrap it a whole lot. Uh, when you have someone with really long hair that you're doing this on, I know you can see it dripping because this is just a little bit awkward the way I'm doing it. Uh, normally, I'd have them tilt their head forward so that uh, it didn't drip. And you're going to go on each one. Once you've taken care of each one, then you're going to reapply. Wait a few minutes and then reapply. If the hair, when you apply, starts dripping, and I know you can see some drips, and I apologize for that, and that's because this is just awkward. But that's why you start from the bottom and go to the top. That hair, that product is running down. So that's why you don't oversaturate it. It's running down onto the scalp, not, not necessarily onto the other one. Don't you love these glasses? We're very normal here. Let me dry the bottle. Okay, there you go. I always like to put a towel on my apron. And again, up in the front, if it was a client, I would definitely be holding this towel up front while I do this. Okay? And then the cotton should be resting. Now, I'll be honest with you. If your cotton is saturated with product, you're oversaturating. That hair is letting it drip off. It's got too much on it. Your cotton should actually be pretty dry afterwards. It's just there for just a little bit of moisture. I can't tell you how often I've seen people totally saturate that their cotton has all the product. Why are you throwing money away? Why are you wasting product? Because that's what you're doing. You're throwing your money away. Uh, keep it on the hair. Uh, you're not going to be able to charge your client more for product that fell on the cotton. So, see, I'm just sweeping up one time. And that uh, would put the cotton on, I know. All right, you guys, sorry. Put the cotton on. Pull it up, make sure that it's on there, and I'm going to keep it from dripping. Okay, now all I would do now is I'd wait two to three minutes and then reapply. If you need to open up another container, you would then double your feet. That's what you charge by. You charge by container. How many boxes of product did I need to use to do this? All right, so I'm going to quickly reapply. This is pretty saturated. I can feel it on there. And because it was, um, I'm just going to start here as well. 
because once I'm done applying, I'm going to show you this real quick because I'm not going to keep you tied up with this. You know how to apply. I don't need a plastic bag with the mannequin, but what I want to show you, the reason for the plastic bag is for the natural heat, for the client's natural heat to keep this moving. Heat, sometimes that's why we put them under the dryer. But even with the with the with an acid perm, we have you know the client's own natural heat will uh, continue the process. Will speed it up a little bit. She's. I'm going to leave it on for about 15 minutes. But what I want to show you about putting on a cap. I see so many people open them up and then they shake them and then they try and put them on. Take it, open it up like this, and then put it on backwards. Now this is not going to fit because it's too small. It's meant for a regular perm wrap. But if you put it on backwards, you have a good snug uh, fit on them. So don't go opening it up and try to fit it on. Open it up. Here's the back to it. See, that's, that's where it was. This is the back to it. And then come forward with it and lock it up up front. Uh, with this, I would almost have to use plastic wrap if I wanted that natural heat on there. And you can use saran wrap, you can use plastic wrap, any of that, uh, to, to close that in and keep the natural heat. So we're gonna turn it off for a minute. I'm going to reapply all over. It's gonna be on for 15 minutes. I will be taking it, uh, rinsing it before I come back. And uh, it's gonna be on for 15 minutes. I'll rinse it, and, but I wanna show you what you look for when you towel dry, all right? because you have to try and get as much of that product out of it. You're going to rinse for a full five minutes, two songs, and just go over it, over it, over it. Don't just rinse and then let them get back up. It's got to be at least a complete two songs. If you're halfway on a song, you're going to do two and a half songs. All right? Most of us have music in the salon, don't we? So keep track of that. Otherwise, set your timer for five minutes and rinse for a full five minutes, all right? So we'll be back. Okay. Okay, so what I've done, I've rinsed her for a full five minutes. The way that you check is, is uh, I'm gonna show you how to check to see if the perm is ready too, which if you've seen other perms, you know, you just kind of open it up and you see that S shaping. You notice that I'm picking up each one and making sure that they're dry. Making sure that most of the moisture, we don't want it dry, we want it damp. Now the way that you can secure that it's damp is, again, I've been doing this now for just a little bit, picking up each one. This is where it takes time. With the other ones, all you're going to do is you're just going to keep squeezing in this form. When you do a straight to the scalp wrap, but with the loops, it's a little different. So if you get a paper towel, place it on there. See how there's still a little bit of moisture in there? You don't want it, like if it was really soaked, if it was it really spread out all over, then I would know that she's, you know, we haven't dried it enough. So see how it's just a little bit, so we're pretty good. I mean, I've been standing here for a little while, just kind of pulling up each one so it's still not doing, you know, not really wetting it a whole lot. So we're good. Uh, you, it, once you do it, you'll be able to tell the difference. So I would then, what I'm gonna do now is um, get my, thumbtack, make another little hole on the neutralizer, and I'm gonna saturate exactly like I did the other one. So you already know how I do this. So we'll be back. Now you're gonna leave the neutralizer on for a full five minutes, all right? Usually, um, what, what uh, another thing that you can do, if somebody says these are too small, you can take the rods down very carefully. It's called drop neutralizing. You would then pick the hair up in your hands and squirt the neutralizer on it and just kind of squeeze it a little bit. But it would be section by section. Uh, I'm gonna demonstrate that just back here so I can show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna open this up and you're gonna see, it takes a little bit and there's a curl in there already. 
So we went, and you can see that it's going to be a little difficult to take it out. So I'm just going to take one down. But you can see the curl, all right? And if she says, I don't think I want it that tight, then you would drop them. You would drop this section first. You would work section by section only. You don't want to drop them all. You're going to place it in your hand. You're going to saturate it with the neutralizer. The cuticle is open, and you'll feel a little bit of a warmth. Strange. It gets real cold when you put the, the perm solution on and when you put the neutralizer on. So you're just going to hold it for a minute. You're going to pinch it for a little bit, and then you're going to drop it. All right, now the rest of them I'm going to go ahead and neutralize, but that's called drop neutralizing. And I'm going to pick this up in a little bit, and you're going to see that it's just a little bit softer than the other ones of the same color. All right, so we'll be back in a little bit. This has got to stay on for five minutes. No reason for you to sit there and watch it. We'll be right back. Okay. All right, so I've taken most of it off. These are the, the little pink rods. You can see that little bit of a more of a spirally curl on there. Now underneath, do you see that little bit of a softer curl? Not too different from this. This is just, just a scotch, tighter. This is a little bit looser. See that where it's looser. So drop neutralizing loosens, loosens it a little bit. The instructions tell you to rinse before you take it off. My preference has always been take the rods out first. It's in there. The perm is going to stay and you can see that nice curl. Now, you pull them apart, let me dry my hands, and sometimes you might have to get a couple of paper towels to help you, but, oh God, listen. okay, so, but do you see the shape of the, and then you're going to take it, you can just slide that paper out, but do you see the shape? This is the reason for the hot water, because if you do another perm and you get stuck where you have to turn it in the opposite direction, what happens after a while, you wear this out and it starts popping out. It becomes bigger. So you don't want to do that. And this is where you also have to be careful with the client. You know, when you're pulling it, try not to pull her head. Now, I haven't rinsed off the neutralizer yet. My preference is, and it's a personal preference, I leave the neutralizer in until I've taken the rods out. Okay, here is my why. If I take the neutral, if I rinse it to take the neutralizer out, I've got a head that's extremely wet. It's already wet with product. All right. A neutralizer has hydrogen peroxide in it. Hydrogen peroxide is the chemistry for that is H2O2. What is H2O? H2O is water. So, and uh, you can see in the basket here, see that little curved shape on all of them. So once you put them in hot water, they do just kind of relax out and get straight. So I'm taking them down. You'll see that nice spiral perm, not a whole lot of work without, and yet we've got this beautiful, really nice curl, all those different rods and you see that the smaller ones don't really affect it a whole lot. Especially if they're too small and they say, I don't want it that, that tight, then what you do is you drop neutralize. Take them out before you put the neutralizer on there. You do have to saturate the neutralizer. The hair's wet, so yes, it's going to drip. I normally neutralize at the shampoo bowl. I don't do it on the chair because it's, it's going to drip. And you want to make sure that you have a fresh towel around your client's shoulders so that it doesn't drip all over the place. You know, one thing that, that I see so many people do when they take the perm rods out, they leave the end papers in there and then set them down. What does that do for you? What is your time? Your time is money. Take it out now. Be done with it. Throw this in the trash. Make that a practice. And papers here, perm rods either in the shampoo bowl or in a, in a colander so you can um, rinse them. Because you want to rinse. You don't want to leave that product in there. Okay, so, I mean, you see that this is just a really nice perm. Lots of curl, lots of movement. I 
and just loosen it up like that. Take the end paper out instead of fighting with it because... And, oh, one thing I wanted to share with you guys that I forgot. When you're wrapping the perm, if you have layered hair and you have all these little layers that don't go in, before you wrap it, take the hair, twist it around where the layers are and wrap it. You don't have to twist it tight. Just twist it around. It's still going to get the product in it, but it helps you not having to fight it. And I, I forgot about mentioning that to you, so I apologize for that. But yeah, when you're having a problem because of layers, just twist it. It's all going to go in, in, a, in a curl motion anyways. What motion it goes isn't, isn't a big factor. Now you notice what I'm doing with the end papers. I'm putting them in my hand, and if there is a trash can close by, that's where they go. Now, see, that's what I had to do. I had to twist this one. Now, watch what happens. It didn't change it at all. It still comes out real nice because I ended up having to put another end paper on there. Make sure when you put your rods away that you've taken all the hair out of it and stuff. It, you know, make it look clean for your next client. Don't let it, don't make it look like, oh my goodness, how, what would happen if you went to the doctor's office and, uh, and they didn't clean up after you? Or, you know, you didn't have a clean sheet. It looked like somebody else had been sitting on that paper that you have to sit on when you go. Uh, you don't want that, so. But you can see that this perm is just really nice. It's soft. And if she had really long hair, like, and, and that variable, I'm just taking it halfway up, and that's all you perm if they just want curl on the ends. Now, you can do that as well with perm rods. Like, if they just want curl on the ends, so it looks like they did the, the thermal curling on them, and it stays like that, that's perfectly fine, because they can always just press it back out, and then just when it's wet, it pops back in again. So just understand that any single chemical service to the hair shaft is like taking a feather and ruffling it back three times. And I think she looks pretty good. You can't really tell what the different size rods were. The, the smaller ones were right there at the occipital, but you can't really tell. We use the gray here, and uh, you see what a spiral perm does. Now it's much softer on the bottom. You can see that. So, and a little bit, you know, tighter as we go up. But, um, yeah, I'm going to take her now and I'm going to rinse her. And that's where you decide, you know, are we going to do a haircut after this to kind of trim the ends? What's going to happen after this? So I just dropped some of my papers. But, um, yeah, that's just basically it. That's your spiral wrap. So uh, I'm glad I went ahead and did it. I hate, you know, having to do a bunch of stuff to my mannequins. Chemically, because when you buy a mannequin, it's already chemically treated. But if you learn how to apply, do you see that there's no tangles? If you apply correctly and not over-saturate, over, like I said, once it starts dripping, you're done. But make sure that you've covered the entire rod or the entire loop, okay? You guys have a great day. Please get my book. I would appreciate it. It helps. Take care. God bless. Bye.